yeah, I mean, I know what it's like to stream to nobody. And I know how that can feel when you are like, you are passionate about it and you do want to be a content creator, a streamer, and you would love to like have that be your career and to just have like that zero, like for not just like a few days, like we're talking years. So it does, it's really cool to be able to go into small streamers and be like, hey. David, welcome to the Becoming a Creator podcast. It's so good to have you on. I love like just a little bit of your story. I was doing some research and I just am excited to share with the audience today. There's a lot of new creators that are listening that I think will benefit a lot from your story and, and kind of how you found your niche in the industry. So thanks for coming on today. Thank you. I, uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about streaming and content. It's been my world right now. I've been playing video games, you know, my whole life. Right. I'm 31 years old. I grew up playing video games like on my dad's Macintosh and then, you know, the console era. And so I've been playing video games a long time. I started streaming three years ago when my brother gave me his old gaming PC and he's like, I'm moving. I can't take it. Do you want it? And I'm like, sure. So I started streaming and I wanted to stream because I wanted to post like clips for my friends that was literally it just like i want to record the clips and send them to the boys you know brag about it brag about this crazy thing that i did and then it started to become like hey this like if i work hard at this it could actually potentially be something more so one of you're known for is the TikTok viral donation videos i'm donating to a streamer who has zero viewers hey thank you man i appreciate that thank you for the donation thank you so much thank you oh my god <laughs> you've become a bit of an inspiration for making these videos mm -hmm. i want to ask who inspired you so we all know mr beast and he's kind of like the og he's like our generations you know he's a godfather of content creation and making cool youtube videos and stuff so we all know like years ago he was donating to streamers with zero viewers, but he would donate like a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, you know, forty thousand dollars, just like absurd amounts of money. I mean, if anyone could get credit, it could be him. I don't know who did it before him, but I was going through TikTok as I do, and I saw a guy named Hype Season, and he is like, he's the first one I saw on TikTok doing it. So I commented, and I'm like, dude. This is awesome. Like, this is really cool. I can't do the Mr. Beast. I don't have money, <laughs> but I could do a dollar. I could do five bucks on a good month. I could do 20 bucks. So I'm going to like, you know, I'm always making content. I'm always posting clips anyways. I'm going to like, I'm just going to try this and see what happens. And so I did it. And by the way, I'm a video editor by trade. So I work with a production company and I edit like all day long anyways. Okay. So I just like started doing it and I did 10 videos. I'm like 10 bucks, 10 videos. Maybe we'll get a reaction. Maybe not, you know, whatever. Let's just see, you know, I'm like, that's really cool. And it's cool. Cause it's like it people, it means a lot to people, you know, and I'm, I'm a small streamer. I still consider myself a small streamer. And, you know, I remember when like, my brother donated five bucks to me for the first time. Like when I started streaming, it was my brother, but I was like, dude, that's awesome. Like, it's a cool, like, it's a great feeling. And it's like, man, you know, it's just, it's, it's just something that only, uh, you know, like a streamer understands that feeling. So I did it. And then it, they started to like get a few more views than my other videos. I'm like, okay, this is cool. I can like really edit these, make them good and it could like be something and then video number 12 happened just you gotta you gotta up. tell me more about donation video number 12. i donated a single dollar to a streamer with zero viewers and this was their reaction i noticed he had a pretty gnarly beard so i asked how much to get you to shave your beard on stream and what he told me shocked me Oh shit, dude. Oh, I am a hey, I appreciate that dollar. How big of a tip to shave my beard on stream? Well, um, unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna probably lose my beard. 
So, I don't know, thousand dollars. <laughs> Knowing nothing about this guy, I asked why, if you don't mind. Well, exclamation point, go fund me. Not that you have to do anything there, but, uh, kind of answers it, but, uh, I got the big C, my dude. That'll be okay. But all this hair, all this hair will go away. No, I'll beat it. I'll beat it for sure. I appreciate that, though. After hearing this devastating news, I really wanted to help, but I also wanted to be sensitive to him and his story. So I asked, can I share your story with my followers? Dude, yeah. If you he wants to, that would be well, you're probably feeling much, bad, actually. much appreciated, man. Thank you. It's just so crazy how it happened because, it, like, with these things, you know, it just, like, almost didn't happen. And I was, like, I did all my donation videos. And normally, you know, I look for people with, like, zero viewers or one viewer. And this guy had, like, two or three viewers but as i was going through i saw the thumbnail on twitch and he had a big beard and i'm like all right this guy kind of looks like a character you know like let me just hop in a stream and see what he's about and go in i donate a buck or whatever it is and i'm cheeky so i'm immediately like hey how much how much do i need to donate to have you shave your beard on stream because if he's like a hundred bucks Man, I might do it. You know, that might be worth the content. You know, that might be worth like a funny video and, you know, whatever. And then it just got super real, which I was not, <laughs> I was not ready for. How much to shave the beard? Oh, I don't know, like a thousand bucks. And then he kind of starts to like tell a story a little bit and he's, he, you know, says, I'm going to lose it soon. And then I, in my mind, I'm like, oh man, David, come on, bro. Like, don't put your foot in your mouth. Did you really just like make a joke about this guy's beard and now he's going to he's going to go through chemo, you know? And so I kind of asked him and I said, hey, if you don't mind, like, why? Because he didn't actually say. And he's like, well, I got, you know, I got the big C, I got cancer. And so I'm starting chemo soon. And so I'm going to lose my beard and the hair and everything. And so. I was like, dude, I'm, first of all, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to like make a, a crack at you for the beard. I had no clue. If I would have looked in his about me, I would have seen that. But of course, you know, we talked a little bit and then I just said, hey man, is it cool if I make a video and post about it and direct people to your GoFundMe? Cause he's trying to raise 80,000 bucks for his treatment. And he is, he's a construction worker. And so he can't work and, and he's like, yeah, sure, man. That's fine. That's cool. And so if he would have said no, like I'd rather not or whatever, then I've been like, cool, no worries, man. And it would have just ended. So I made the video, spent about an hour editing it and just directed people to the GoFundMe. And, you know, I, I posted a video on YouTube, just kind of, of like the compilations. It's crazy. In like 10 days, we raised hundred thousand dollars for him but it was really cool to just see how the story kind of happened you know his attitude seems incredibly positive i watched his reaction he seems so in the right mind space around it which is amazing but how does that make you feel like you may have just changed this guy's life yeah i mean it's pretty surreal right it's a little bit of vindication and when i say that so i do freelance editing on the side while i work for this company like a day or two before that, a client that I had been working with, I actually haven't really told this to anyone, but a client that I had been working with for a better part of the year basically just dropped me. It was pretty out of nowhere too. I'm not happy with the way things have been. I'm not happy with previous results. And it was kind of like news to me. I'm like, well, what what's going on? I'm kind of a perfectionist. And so I was pretty annoyed. I was like, man, what is wrong with me? Am I really like a bad editor? Like, can I really like, do I not have the creativity or the, you know, the, the skill to kind of do this, you know? And then a couple days later I, I made this video and it was like, it blew up and I'm like, okay, I'm not like, I'm not terrible. <laughs> I'm at least not terrible. And it was a little bit of vindication, if that makes sense. I was like, okay, like I, 
I can do this. This is, you know, thousands of comments of people like, man, this like inspired me, this touched me, um, this, you know, affected me positively. So, you know, not that I look to other people for like my sense of worth or value or anything like that. Um, but I think the human side of us, right. We all like, it's easy to be like, dang, <laughs> I basically like got fired and like, am I actually good at this? And so it was really cool. The timing was kind of perfect. I'm like, no, like you're wrong. <laughs> I am actually good at my job. And like, you just got to figure that out. How long had editing been a part of your identity or your career, I guess, to that point? I mean, I've been, I've been editing videos since like the iMac G3. So, you know, iMovie was like a big groundbreaking kind of software. Just, just to be clear, you could edit. you've been editing yeah. for almost two decades at this point. Yeah. And you questioned your own ability to edit based on someone else's saying they don't need you anymore. Yeah. 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 I know. I have like good friends and family around me who are like, no, like, you are good and I'm, but I'm all self-taught too. So that's, I think where I didn't go to school for this. I didn't, you know, I didn't go to film school or anything. Like I don't learn. It's all self-taught and just experience over the last, you know, years. And I haven't, mind you, I haven't been like full-time editing for 20 years, but I have always been editing. Like every year there's always a few things I'm just doing. So it's only in the last couple of years that I've actually, started it as my job yeah I, i'm curious to see if that's you're just starting after the last few years where you end up in five years if, if you if you're just starting um that's that's phenomenal one of the things you were touching on is just this confidence that you you mentioned you need to be a streamer to really understand what it means when someone donates to you and that feeling it creates what you're doing is like you're effectively you're giving people recognition and I feel like it's deeper. I feel like you're giving them like confidence because it's hard. Like when you're out there streaming every day or every other day, it's like hard. And you showing up and giving them that donation, it just feels like you're giving them that little bit of confidence they needed to like keep going. Yeah, I guess I just really want to like encourage them because I am them. I'm not on any like elevated level. Yeah, I have more TikTok followers now, but two months ago, I was streaming to two viewers probably. And the, you know, three years before that, I had my viewer count turned off because I wasn't going to look at it. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to look at it anymore. It's just not, I was like, it's, I got to play because I actually enjoy it. And if streaming becomes about that number, then I'm just, I'm never going to like have fun. And so I just like turned it off. Yeah. I mean, I know what it's like to stream to nobody and I know how that can feel when you are like, you are passionate about it and you do want to be a content creator, a streamer, and you would love to like have that be your career and to just have like that zero, like for not just like a few days, like we're talking years. So it does, it's really cool to be able to go into small streamers and be like, Hey, this, this buck doesn't really mean anything to you. And after PayPal takes their cut, it's even less, but you know what, you know, you're awesome. And like, you know, keep the dream alive. One of my favorite videos that didn't even get a ton of traction was this kid. And he was just like, I just said, Hey man, like, you know, keep up the good work, keep the dream alive. And I have no idea what he's going through or like, but he was like profoundly impacted by just that statement. He's like, wow, man, like you have no idea. And he like, it got super real. I'm like, cool, mission accomplished. What a hell of a feeling to make that like, again, you do not know what's going on for the, those people. And if right. you hit them at the right time, the, the change, the difference, it doesn't have to be that you raised all this money for charity, but you just made that little shift that they needed wherever they were at in their life. In the same way, you just told me that you got, you know, let go of your job. And then two days later, you had this kind of validation of like, no, oh, I am good at my job. Fuck you. Um, I can do this, uh, which is totally true. Um, I want to switch a little bit to your personal brand and, and talk about like 
how has the success or the viral nature of donating to small streamers and not necessarily streaming yourself impacted you as a creator? Like less about your streaming and more about covering someone else's streaming. How has that impacted your decisions or your content as a creator? It's definitely made me kind of like look at big picture and be like, okay, so what do I, what do I want to do? What am I like really passionate about? Like, it's not just sitting here playing video games, you know? And really the thing with Jay kind of opened my eyes was like, we can like, we can do some good. Like we can actually do some good here. And I don't even need to have a massive platform to do good. That's what's crazy is like, you can do a lot of good, even if you have three, like I had 3000 TikTok followers when I posted that video. And that kind of opened my eyes. I'm like, dude, I want to do that. And I want to like, I want to scale it and I want to do more and I want to help more people. I'm in the weeds, I'm in the trenches. I'm on Twitch in the zero viewers just going through. And so like I can get to those real people who have real needs. To me, I've started to think about, okay, how can we, how can we grow this and scale this and still reach like the same people? And so for me, that looks like, man, I'm trying to get brand deals to help with this, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, someone like a Venmo who will be like, Hey, we'll give you a thousand extra dollars to go and donate and to really like, you know, find people. I have a dream to like partner with someone like micro center to like jump in and be like, Oh, you know, you need a, you need a new microphone for every kill you get. We're going to sponsor a new piece of your setup. Like we want to help you get a new setup and kind of help you with this dream of yours. And so like, I have a lot of ideas like that kind of floating around in my head to just really be in there and kind of build the streaming community at large. So as resource comes, like, you know, I'm trying, but right now it's just me and my, uh, me and my wife's money and just kind of making content and doing stuff where we can. It's so cool to see how your thinking is a evolving around your content and where you, you want to take it. Like, I think it's, it's really important that you have, like, it's hard. Cause like, again, you want to be on the floor, but you also want to up level your right. thinking and like, see the bigger picture. It's always hard to shift between those two states. Right. I struggle with that all the time. Um, one of the things you had in your bio is operation quit job. Yeah. I just changed that. Can you explain what that means to me? Yeah, I literally changed that. I think yesterday, yesterday I'm ready to send it on this thing. And just kind of like realize that this is kind of where I've always been heading. Um, this is the direction I've always been going in. Two years ago when I had zero people like watching my stream, like consistently, I was still raising money and we, you, you might see it on my YouTube channel, had a connection through a friend of a kid who has muscular dystrophy. And I don't know if you're familiar with it, but basically it's, it's really like, he just got dealt a terrible hand, really like sweet kid in third grade or something. Anyways, we raised money as a little like small community on my stream and bought him a switch and controllers and like just rolled up to his house and be like, Hey, this is for you. No strings attached. That's, this is from, this is from us. And we just think you're awesome. And so. The video is kind of funny because he's like, oh my gosh, thank you. Look, there's a plane. Like he's just a little kid. Like <laughs> he doesn't really fully even realize what's going on, but it was just super cool. And I'm like, man, we were doing that before like any of this. And I was like, we, this is kind of where I've already been going. And so operation quit my job is like, I'm trying to break even. <laughs> That's all it is. I'm trying to break even and pay my bills and then keep building on, on this. So if I hit 2000 subs on Twitch, I can break even, I can support my wife, family, and then I can do this full time, which is really, man, that's, that's where my passion is at for sure. So it's risky though, man, it's risky. It is, especially when you've got responsibility. Yeah. It's no longer you. Uh -huh. you 
young and in your early 20s and you can do whatever the hell you want you've got more on your play but i'm bullish i'm, I'm long i'm long david on this one with growing your your tiktok thank you have you seen like short form content build your brand the most viral ones are not the shortest the most viral ones like tell the best story and so i think that's like a major key in how I edit and how I like create content is, I mean, this isn't news to anyone, like any good cinema, it's good because the, oftentimes a story. And so, yeah, man, tell, like, tell a story. And I totally lucked out with the J thing, like him and the beard and everything like, but the, in the editing, I told the story, right? And so I would say if you're creating content, if you're streaming, you know, figure out a way to like tell the story and, and tell people's stories. And um, I think that's even more powerful because again, the other one that blew up was like, it's super long. It's like a minute and 20 seconds or something, but people watch the entire thing because it's like, it's interesting. It, it has story. So I think it's less about the time and more about what are you making people feel? What's the story you're telling? If I wanted to get better at the story element, what would you recommend I do? If it's something you would watch, I think that's a good start. You know, go through your TikTok and what are you just swiping up on and passing over? You know, but then what makes you stop and watch, like, keep watching? Okay, well, there's something there. And so I would be like self aware to know when I'm scrolling through. I see something, you know, we make a decision in like half a second to just say, eh, nah, nah, that's not interesting. Eh, that's not interesting. That's not interesting. And then something will make us stop. And so I think being self-aware to know, okay, what is it about this piece of content that's making me stop evoking some type of emotion, you know, whether it's something funny or, you know, sentimental, like a lot of mine are like, I use the, you know, the up theme song. And it's very, you know, it's a piano and it's very evoking this, emo very emotional and it's, and it's on purpose. And so I think doing that, um, it just adds to like the, the story and the beauty of it. And so like trying to figure out, okay, in this piece of content, what kind of emotion do I want to evoke? I like to do a mix. I like to do funny stuff. I like to do emotional stuff. And I think with the, the, the J one, the other J who's playing Terraria, that one is the best of both worlds. It has like some funny or it has like super emotional and then funny because it starts with the piano music. And again, I have no clue, but I just donate. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he freaks out and he's like, dude, thank you so much. That's my first donation. And he has this reaction. And he's just like, you're a beautiful person. Like, I'm going to clip that forever. Da, 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 da. And then I'm like, well, let's, let's sweeten the pot. And so I tell him, Hey, if you beat this boss that he was fighting, I will donate again. He sees that and he's like, Oh my gosh. So then I'm like, all right, now when he fights this boss, I'm going to switch up the music, make it a little more funny, intense, just evoking those emotions. Like if it doesn't make you feel anything or you're not like excited about it, like when I'm editing, I'm like, oh yeah, this is good. Like I, I'm excited about this. And sometimes it, it like doesn't do as well as I think it should, but if you can't get excited about it, there's no way other people are gonna get excited about it. You've learned so many tricks even on off the last 20 years of editing. When it comes to like your process, what's like the process you go through? A lot of folks that are might have been streamers are like starting to do video and it's a little bit much different to be honest um than, than live mm -hmm. streaming processes have you found that help you get the videos out i just try and carve out time around my work schedule so if i know i'm gonna have a block of time i'm like okay like my wife is at school i'll be off of work and i'll have like two hour block in my mind you have to do this stuff in bulk like you can't, there's no way, it just doesn't make any sense to just like, oh, I'm going to go do a donation and then do, do something else and then come back and do it again. No, I go and I'm like, okay, I have like 20 bucks. I have 20 extra bucks this week. Like it's so real out here. It's so funny because people on TikTok, they're like, 
oh, you made so much money off of this guy. I'm like, no, I'm not in the creator fund. I haven't, like, I've seen nothing. I'm like, I got 20 bucks. I'm going to go and try and do like 20 donations or, or I'm going to do 10 and like do a couple extra fives or something like that. And so I do it all sometimes on stream, sometimes off stream. And then I will take that video, bring it onto my computer. And then from there, I'll just kind of just cut out the sections, add the subtitles, do all that, like start the editing process. And then in my dream world, I have like 10 videos. Some don't turn out so great, so I don't post them, but I have, usually I have like five to seven videos that I like have finished. I watch them over and I'm like, if there's like one little thing that kind of bothers me, I'm like, ah, go back, fix it. Then like watch it again. Then I watch it on my phone to make sure it kind of like feels right, sounds right on my phone. And then if like, that's all good and I don't notice anything like bad, I throw it in TikTok and, you know, throw it in the drafts and post them as the days, you know. So you, you mentioned the storytelling aspect and the batching content. Is there any other tips that you would, if someone's like, I got to start on TikTok, um, is there any tip you would give them that you should just keep in mind, like nuance of the platform? Like, look at what's doing well. Gary V always says like consume, 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 and then create. And I think that resonates with me is if you're like, especially if you're not familiar with TikTok, I think you just need to really spend time consuming. He's pretty extreme. He's like, you need to consume for eight hours and then go and create. And I'm like, well, if you just spend even like 30 minutes or an hour, like going through TikTok and especially like gaming TikTok, see what you like, but also see what's doing well, because there's a lot of stuff that I really like <laughs> that I post. It doesn't do well. And so you got to find that, that kind of middle area where you're like, okay, I like this and it also does well. It's not everything you're going to create, but with TikTok, yeah, like consume, 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 look at other gaming content that's doing well that you like if you play first person shooters look at what like some follow a bunch of esports people who are playing games and see what they're doing you know so i follow i follow all those people on tiktok and i think you did a interview with dr lupo and he's like someone i follow and like just see what they're doing cuz they're they have great editors who are making their stuff and you know it's not bad to like draw inspiration from those things. And if you like directly do something, so like the donation thing, I saw hype season do that. And I commented on his thing. I'm like, dude, I'm going to like, I'm going to steal this. And he's like, yeah, dude, like he's super cool. He's like, yeah, dude, that's awesome. Like I want more people to do it. And like we, we chat every now and then. And so he's cool. And then like when I first posted, I'm like, totally inspired by hype season. So I'm going to do this like in my caption, you can like see it there. And so I think, you know, if you were like really like kind of, I don't want to say ripping off someone, but if you were like totally inspired and the, the creative ideation is like directly connected to this other person, you know, give them credit or at least don't be that person who's like, this is all my idea. Isn't that great? It's like, yeah. no, like, there was other people before us. TikTok is awesome. And I think the, o the only other thing I'd say, which I've kind of learned this over the last few month, weeks or so, is when you post a new video, it's gonna be pushed out to like, it'll be pushed out first to a newer audience. And so you don't wanna assume that like, so all my followers, they don't see the video as soon as I post it. The people who see it first is actually new people. And so keep that in mind when you're creating your content is this will be people's like first look at you. Again, back to like Gary V stuff. A lot of his stuff is he, he like harps on the same things over and over and over. He kind of beats the same drums over and over and that's on purpose. And so your core audience will eventually see it. And they'll like get around to it, but just keep in mind, like there's going to be a whole new set of people seeing this content for the first time. So any way you can rope them in or do something new, 
which is why kind of the intro for like my donation videos works is because it's like, oh, this is what this video is about. And I don't need any more context than that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't need to know that, oh, this is the donation guy. Because if I just said, hey, it's me again, you know what I'm going to do, and then went into it, they'd be like, well, no, I don't know who you are. And it's, you know, it doesn't mean anything. And so being able to just provide that right out of the gates where a new person doesn't need any context, but they can interact with your video, I think is huge. What are some things that you're looking forward to across the rest of the year? I'm excited to help more people. Like, I feel like I'm literally just getting started. Even though I've been grinding for years, I feel like it's really just getting started. Yeah, I really, really want to like partner with some people, you know, and really like, cause I can only do so much. And I, you know, I say that it's kind of crazy. I just donated a dollar and now this guy is like, has this treatment paid for. But and so kind of my like philosophy has always been for, for a long time. It's like, I, I want, I want more stuff to come to me so that it can go through me. I'm not like a hoarder. I'm not a person who's like, dude, I, I just seriously want to get rich. I want to be flush with cash. Yeah. Everyone wants money, but I'm like, if more can come to me, I am like open hands. Like I am like so happy to give, give, give. And I think, you know, I feel like that's a lot of what Mr. Beast does. And so I've really started to lean into the generosity and the philanthropy side of it. I do not consider myself like a philanthropist. Uh, that seems like a bit, like that's like Bill Gates, you know? Yeah. I want to like lean into that hard. And so I'm actively like trying to reach out to some people and be like, Hey, like, this is what I'm doing. I would love to partner with you. Yeah. I'll throw, I'll throw your logo on something. If it means I get to bless a small streamer, like I don't care. And so, yeah, I want to lean into that. And I, I really want to see, you know, where things can go this year. I just want to like help as many people as possible, especially in like the gaming community. I feel like that's like my focus, not completely, but um, in that space. And I'm really excited for a project that I shameless stream plug a project that I'm doing. My goal is to play through every video game that I basically like remember or have a core memory about dating back to an original, like black and white Macintosh to like original Xbox and streaming them on original hardware. Ooh, yeah. The emulator or the actual hardware? No, the actual hardware. And so I'm, it's been like, I've been working on this for like the last year and it's that it's not easy. I'll tell you that. Like, have you ever tried streaming a Sega Game Gear? No. Not, not a thing. So, um, so I'm working on that, but I'm excited to eventually like put out like a little trailer for that. And I really want to build my stream obviously so that I can like stabilize a little bit and then full-time this thing. I'm really excited to do creative projects like that this year in tandem with helping people. I love it. I love it. David, where can people find you if the you want to go check yeah whether it's TikTok or, or Twitch, where should they go? Two quick ones on everything. Gonna be doing streaming and YouTubing and TikToking like really hard this year. Well I'm excited. I'm I'm stoked to watch your journey. I do I echo your feeling that this is just the beginning. Um I oh, think you've you. had two interestingly defining moments that have happened to you in the last few months that I think are gonna really set you up for a fantastic year. So thanks for joining us, David. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I wanted to just end this with a little bit of context on why we do what we do. We're former content creators ourselves, and we just really want to help as many content creators as we can. That's why we started pipeline.gg. It's a platform where you can find other like-minded creators and learn from the pros who have already been there. Get step-by-step -step guidance so you can avoid all the mistakes that we made in the beginning. If you love the episode, there's going to be even more inside of pipeline. So check it out, head over to pipeline.gg.